Would you rather carve out the time, like to either do it yourself or pay somebody to do it for you? You know, the best gift you can give your family is having that stuff together and knowing where to point them so that they're prepared. So that's that's where Be Organizing came to live and that's how it started. The three most precious resources are your time, your energy, and your money, right? Those are our most precious resources. Hey guys, welcome to the Financial Mastery Simplified Podcast. I am your host, Jax Kreider, and we are trying to take any kind of concept in the financial space, things that touch the financial space, and make it easy to understand and something that you can use for your real life. And today we have as our guest, Miss Alex. She is in the organizing space, and I'm going to let her introduce herself and tell her tell us a little bit about why she is excited to be on the podcast today. Yes. Thanks, Jax, for having me. My name is Alex Brzezowski. I own, I'm the owner and founder of Be Organizing. We provide digital organizing services for individuals and people and businesses who want to work on email management, to-dos, tasks, calendaring, files and folder organization, creating structures and things like that. Um, and just a little bit about myself um, before we dive in, I started... Um, Back in 2012, when the industry of digital organizing was not a thing, it wasn't being searched for. And uh, so I actually, and let me go back a little bit further. I actually started in law. I was a paralegal for uh, five years. I studied criminology and sociology in college. I love it. I still do. Um, but it was just as a paralegal, I wasn't being challenged the way that I needed to be challenged at the end of the day. And there wasn't room for me to grow as I wanted in that space. So I realized that the clients that I worked for and worked with um, in both at the law firm that I was with, they were really struggling with you know, we did estate administration, will trust probate, things of that nature, civil litigation and business law, and someone would pass away or there'd be a dispute. And I'd be like, excuse me, can you please send me all your um, deceased father's bank statements and liabilities and their debts and their subscriptions and their this and their that. And these people looked at me like I was crazy. And being- I had no clue where they were. They had no idea no idea. And it's also a very sad time for them. Like the last thing they're thinking about are transactional things. And that, but they are important because for example, like one of our clients lived with her father, the father passed away and the lights were turned out. Like she didn't have power. Oh my gosh. You know? So like we had to know where, where was this coming from? What bank account was it on? What's this? What's that? What's the login? What's what, you know, we needed to have all that information in order to fix that. So, and just in order to move things forward. And also at the same time, the law firm I was with, and I worked for two different law firms, one giant one and a smaller one. Um, and let me tell you, both of them, this was back in 2008, were a hundred percent paperless. And that's crazy because law firms, that was like a huge, like, that's like, Oh no, that is, that is a huge deal. That's pioneering a whole thing here. Like that is a really big deal. And okay, in so that it was on, a let's, huge, let's, yeah. I was gonna say, let, let's give them some perspective. So you guys don't know this probably, but I actually have a law degree and I will never forget when I started going to law school and it was like Lexus, Nexus and Westlaw was a huge deal. And those are basically where they store all of the um, electronic versions of uh, court cases, right? So like all of those yeah, case documents law. are stored. Yeah, the case law, it's all stored electronically, but that was like a new thing. And I started going yes. to law school in like 05. And I was like, what do you mean this is new? Like we still had to do an exercise in law school where we had to go like find the actual physical book case yep. law. And I was like, why are we doing this? Don't we know that the internet is a thing? So yeah, if they in 08 already were digitizing everything and they did not do um, like papers. That's amazing. It was fabulous. And, and to put it into even more context, 2008 was, you know, obviously we all know the mortgage, the crisis that, I mean, you Jax of all people would very much be aware of what was going on then everybody does. But so the first law that. firm, that big law, yes, that first law firm I was in, it was bankruptcy and foreclosures. And we represented the banks, which was 
horrible in a lot of things. And it was all West Coast states. So like Washington, California, Nevada, Arizona, um, and Oregon as well. And we would, it was busy. And like I said, I mean, we were hundred percent paperless and things were just going in, out, in, out, in, out, filing this, filing. That. I mean, it was in Insane. And that process, what, and the whole reason I'm saying this is because the organizing process for that and the organizing process for the small then law firm that I worked for, where it was like six attorneys and I was the one paralegal for all six at one point in time. You were, yes. there was one paralegal yes. for six yes. attorneys? Correct. Okay, so probably the viewers don't realize that that's also really, really light. Like usually it's about like there's like one to two one. attorney for one or one attorney for one. Like that's, that's two, two to one is usually like, okay. And one to one is preferred. Yes. So, so that's why crazy. Yes. When I first started and then I had to raise my hand cause they knew, they knew I was going to get busy. They knew that it was going to be too much. And sure enough that happened. And I had to be like, you need to hire more people. Yeah, please. Um, please hire. Please and they did. Drown. Yes. And they did. And then eventually I did just work for one. And I did, I stuck with um, Will's Trust Probate and Estate Administration because there's a lot of, um, it was the highest performing in the law firm. So made sense. Right. Anywho, all that to say is that both law firms were, had the same systems and very similar systems and processes. Like there wasn't that much of a difference. People think it's going to be so different because it's big and versus small. doesn't matter how big or small you are, if you're just yourself or if you have a big corporation or it just doesn't matter. You still need something. And typically it looks somewhat, it doesn't like it can scale. Like it, it it's fascinating. So that's what kind of started the whole love of, oh my gosh, this is a need. And I love what it brings people because it brought people a lot of peace and calm and also clarity by yeah, having all crazy. these things done. And so in having and the biggest gift you can give your family is having that stuff ready for them for when you because guess the two things in life that we know are going to happen, I think, is what do they say? Taxes and that you're going to die like yeah. <laughs> more as that is. That's it. Yeah. You're, gonna, you're gonna pay taxes to the federal government about eight million times and then mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna die at some point. Yes. So, like those are the guarantees in life. So you ha you you know, the best gift you can give your family is having that stuff together and knowing where to point them so that they're prepared. So that's that's where be organizing came to live and that's how it started, is that oh my gosh, I can do this and at the time, the market intent, again, this was 2012 when I finally decided to do something. And it was the end of 2012. So I didn't actually leave until 2013, like to do it full time. And um, the market was not ready for digital yet. So I did physical organizing. Okay. And Yes. So I was doing both digital organizing and physical organizing, but ultimately the market was ready for the physical. So I'd go in and then I'd market myself to also be like, Hey, I also do this. FYI. Like here's what another. A lot of people don't think about digital, like organizing as a thing, but people have to remember, like I, maybe everybody else is different than me, but I feel like there's about 8 million pieces of myself out on the internet, like in all kinds of digital spaces. And it does get a little overwhelming at times, like even with like a password manager that, you know, handles all those things, like remembering all the different websites I'm a part of and the spaces I'm involved in, you know what I mean? Like, that's a lot. Yep. So I can really imagine like, you know, and, and you're right, man, like, you know, I can guarantee you if I killed over right now, my husband had no clue where half of my stuff was. <laughs> exactly. Like we're one unit and he would be like. Oh, Jack's had uh, something with that. Like he would not know. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after this message from our sponsors. Welcome to Financial Mastery Simplified, your go-to podcast for making smart money decisions. We break down complex financial topics into easy to understand advice you can use every day. Our experts cover everything from budgeting and saving to investing and retirement planning. We give you the tools to take control of your money and build the future you want. With Financial Mastery Simplified, you'll feel informed and empowered to make the best choices for your financial health. Tune in to Financial Mastery Simplified on your favorite podcast platform. Start your journey to financial confidence today.
Welcome to House U, where we believe in the power of education. At House U, we're more than just a brand. We're your partner in home ownership, dedicated to educating, equipping, and empowering you every step of the way. Education is at the heart of everything we do. We offer comprehensive resources designed to make home ownership simple and accessible for all. From understanding mortgage options to mastering home maintenance, House U provides the knowledge you need to make informed decisions with confidence. We host workshops and seminars, bringing together experts and community members to share insights and build a stronger, more informed community. Because when you're educated, you're empowered. House U, home ownership made simple for all. Visit our website or contact us today to start your journey with House U. Empower yourself with knowledge and embrace the joy of home ownership. Now back to our conversation. Exactly. And that's and that's scary. And so really having that information together, and that's why I wanted to speak, because I feel like this is such a thing that people don't want to think about. And yeah, now it's in the digital space. It's in the digital space. Like we actually create, and you know, we did estate plans and had all this stuff when, at, when I was at the law firm and we'd give them to people, but guess what it didn't include? It didn't include where your assets are, where your liabilities. It said, this is how I want things distributed, but it didn't actually say, these are where those things are. Right. This Honestly, is where you can go find those things. You know, that's a really good point and something I never really thought about because there is, there's a lot of pieces of the equation. Like, well, and not only that, but things do change over time too. Like even in mortgage land, like you get a mortgage and then there's a piece of paper that everybody signs when they get a mortgage that says um, they have the right to sell the servicing rights. And so that means that, okay, it starts with XYZ company and then it moves to ABC company and then it moves to CDE company. You know what I mean? And it like moves yep. over time. And so, yeah, I mean, if you're not doing a good job of like keeping the digital trail, then if something happens to, you know, the person or something really tragic happens, like multiple people pass away at the same event, right? Like a, like a horrible, you know, like a car wreck or something, right? So like, like both mom yes. and dad pass away. Well, usually you think, okay, one person's going to pass away. So the other person's going to know most of the things, right? Like my husband would probably know 50 to 75% of the stuff for us, right? Yes. There'd be a trailing amount. But yeah, you don't really think about the fact that if something really tragic did happen, like, Nobody would have any clue. And then not only that, no I'm idea. assuming you organize not just for the purposes of like bad things, but also like no. your own peace of mind, like yes. the overwhelm that comes with like being just a hot mess of disorganization. <laughs> yes, abs yes. And that, and that is exactly right. Like we, the people, it's really interesting having, so we actually created what we called the life locker from this whole thing. So it's your life in a locker per se. It's like, here's where you can find my stuff. Here's where my storage unit is. If I have a storage unit, here's where you can find the keys. Here's my dependents. Here's my pets. Here's what their medical information is. Here's my medical information. Cause it's not just necessarily your death, but it's also getting a hold on your entire life in general in your entire space in general. Like here's what's, here's things that are moving in and out, flowing in and out. Here's where you can find these things. And here's how you can log in. Here's where like, I have something over here. So there is this sense of like, okay, I now know where things are and things aren't falling through the cracks. So there's also that, like you said, Jax, that peace of mind that comes with that is priceless and something that I know for one of our clients that I did it, did this with, we went through the life locker and actually went, did, created it for her, like where she now has, and it's just a fillable PDF. It's not anything fancy, but it doesn't need to be anything fancy. That's what's beautiful about it. And it can be updated and you can print it, whatever you want to do. You can share it with the person that you want to, or it's just for your own benefit that you're like, okay, I have now a total hold on a grasp on what's actually going on. Well, I can use this from a, from a practical side, from like the space that I work in. Right. So like, if you're looking to do a major financial transaction, which obviously mortgage is the largest one you'll ever do. Right. Yeah. There's other financial transactions that, that you can do as well. You know, like buying a car and things like that. Usually you need less paperwork for that than you do for mortgage. Right. But a lot of times you'd be surprised how many people we encounter that don't have a clue. Like they don't know where all their things are. And it's one of the things we ask them, like we have to have not just give us the information. So that's step one. So hopefully you at least know more or less where it is, 
but then we actually do have to have copies of it. And most of the time they're electronic. Somebody is like downloading and then uploading into exactly. you know, sites to be able to do it. But you know, it would be, it would be a lot easier if they had everything organized, like what you're talking about. Cause a lot of times it takes them a while. And I, and I, I preface by telling people up front, look, you're going to have to do a little work up front. Um, you're going to have to go and like hunt down these things. And for some people who are organized and have used, you know, either your service or just naturally have a bent for that, yep. it's not too hard. It's pretty easy. But for other people who stuff's a little chaotic all over the map, it could take them a while, right? To like hunt it all down. And that's why we encourage them to do it up front. Because when you're ready to like make that offer and now you're like, oh crap, yep. I got to get Jacqueline 900 documents, you know, like you don't want that to be the case. Like you want to have everything all sorted out and thought through and already done. Exactly. Exactly. And just having, it's almost like your instructions on where to go, how to, <laughs> your, your instructions of this is where I go for this. And I can easily do that for you. Like I always say, taxes are not hard for me to do every year because it's already organized throughout the year. Cause it's well, just that, constantly. That's a really, I mean, that's a really good point too. I think a lot of people think that like doing something in your space or ask, you know, either organizing it themselves or hiring somebody to do it. Oh, that's going to be a lot of time. That's going to be a lot of money. But then they forget that when they are required to do those things, like go get a mortgage, go do your taxes, go do some of these things that you have to do in life to be able to accomplish your goals. And also just because the federal government's going to make you file taxes, like yes. choice. we can't get to avoid that. Unfortunately, be great yes. if you could, but not so much, you it's know, part like, of life that takes a lot of time too. So I guess choose your hard, right? Like, would you rather carve out the time, like to either do it yourself or pay somebody to do it yes. for you? Or would you like when yes. the big things come up in life, then now you have to carve out a lot of time to go sift through the, Back. the disorganization, yes. the stuff. And it's a lot. It is a lot. And it, and it's interesting because it also comes up with other life-changing events too. It's always life-changing events usually is where um, things happen. A birth, um, kid, you know, a kid being born, um, divorce. It could be good and bad. Retirement. Oh, yeah. um, yeah starting out, you know, at a new job, career change. There's so many things um, that this comes up with naturally. So it's just, yeah, so well, needed, so needed. I don't, I don't know if you have seen this shift. Like I know that for sure. I mean, I've been doing what I do for 20 plus years. So I've been doing it for a very long time in this space. And what you've seen over time, or at least what I've seen over time is that people have more complex lives than they once had, right? Like if we drilled all the way back to like our grandparents or earlier than them, they had probably one, maybe two bank accounts. They probably had most of their retirement all in one spot, right? Like as in yeah. one company, um, yep. you know, they, most of them didn't own tons and tons of properties. You know what I mean? Like, so their lives yes. were relatively simple on the, paperwork side, be it physical or digital, like they would have had very simple digital lives, but most yep. of us, that's not the case, right? Like it's in not. the world we live in, we travel all over the place. So some of us that necessitates, you know, multiple bank accounts in, you know, that, so that you can have access to your bank, no matter where you're traveling to, um, you know, we have, we, we go to a lot of different companies, like, whereas before a lot of people would stay at one company for like 30, 40 years. And that's it, right? right. Like they retired from that company. And now anymore, you may stay at a company only for two or three, four years and then move companies. Well, then your 401k stays there or you could choose to roll it, but some people don't because that's a time yeah. process. Don't want to deal with it. Yep. And so it stays there. So then you have, you know, accounts with, you know, Fidelity and Vanguard this and yes. this place and that place. You know what I mean? And like, so our digital lives have become 10 times more complex than like what used to be. And I don't think people take that into account either. Um, that there is they a, don't. There's a lot more going on. There is a lot more going on and the amount of information that we get to like, even just, okay. So like opening up your email, like now that we're paid, like a lot of people are paperless and I agree. I actually am a huge advocate for going paperless because even though people are worried about stuff being accessed, guess what? Even if you're not personally paperless, the banks are, the government is yep. these other places that actually have your information. Are. So it doesn't really like, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter. You, you, you just get to reap the benefits or not of, you know, 
keeping it all together in one nice little compact little folder for yourself, digital folder, right? On your computer, on your phone, you know, in the cloud or what have you. And you can do multi-factor um, authentication yep. for passwords and things like that. So you can have it be super protected and that works tremendously. I would strongly suggest doing that for all your accounts if you haven't already, or especially oh, your yeah. ones that have anything to do Big with financial ones. or Absolutely. information like files and email and things. But like we get emails for, hey, your statement's ready. Hey, this is ready. Oh, hey, that, you know, so like we are inundated with not just like, we just, we can't get away and that's okay. It's just that we have to have a system to address it. And also this is where I was going with this is that if you're worried about having your stuff, cause I have a feeling some people might be still a little nervous about really committing to the whole paperless thing, right? Like I still think that's sure. out there a little bit. I think it's becoming less of an issue, but it's still okay. there. And a natural disaster happened or not a natural disaster. Like for example, a water leak in your home and you lose and all I this stuff. This happened about that. Yes, you definitely do. Poor Jax. And I know that my, I had a, I was in a relationship and his parents house, they were out of town for a week visiting us actually. And they came back and their home had literally collapsed. They had so it was the top floor and then the first floor and the basement and the second floor fell into the first floor and the first floor fell into the basement. So oh they God. lost all their photos. They lost documents. They lost their teeth. I mean, they lost literally almost everything in their home and had nothing. And dealing with insurance and dealing with all the things that they didn't have anymore and having to recreate that from literally nothing, like even yeah, having an inventory, exactly. right? Like just a video, just, just go around your house and video your house and keep that and put yeah, it on the cloud pretty, because guess it's very hard to prove like what you had and what you didn't have, especially when it's all yes. destroyed. Like who's yes. word is it that they're going to accept? And exactly it's not that company is not going to do right, but on the same token, they're not exactly like going to be thrilled with overpaying. So they're going to yes. try to limit their exposure for sure on that risk. Exactly. So there's there's a huge benefit. And and when the, and when you're out of town like you are traveling and you are on the go it allows you to do all those things and not and you can easily get to access to your stuff should you need to. Like I can be anywhere and get to like my <laughs> this is a funny example, but like my, it's not really that funny. It's important to me, but for other people, it may not be is like my, my um, dog has diabetes. So I need, we have like a track, a spreadsheet that tracks all her numbers, her glucose levels, because we can then create, see patterns and um, decide what to do from there. Cause we've had a few scares where we've almost lost her cause her blood sugar dropped. And that's enough to be like, okay, like, I don't want this to do this again, but I can be anywhere and not have to worry about actually, you know, going to that one piece of paper or that one, you know, it's, it's just there. And my husband, and I can share it. Um, just like sharing your calendar, just like sharing, you know, any other information, it's just so much easier to do so and have access to it wherever you are and allows you more freedom to be quite oh, yeah. frank. Well, I More mean, freedom. a lot of people like, um, so like you brought up the calendar thing. So this became a big thing when I had teenage stepdaughters, because what happened was they were all fairly close in age. They all had different schedules and things like that. And so this is what I told them. I was like, look, we want to be at anything that's important to you, but I'm not going to decide what's important and what's not. Yes. So like, if you want me to be there, I'd like to be there, but I need you to put it on the family calendar. That tells me that I, you need my presence at this event because, you know, I was working a full-time job. I was driving, you know, it was really far drive, you know, to and from work and things like that. And like, I needed them to be, you know, learn some responsibility and understand that we needed to be an organ, you know, organized in a way that was shareable. Cause that's a lot of times yes. people don't realize either is that when you have it in a physical format, that might be good for the sake of like, feel good that like you can physically yes. touch it, hold it. But it doesn't mean that it's easy to be able to share when you do need to have things that are, are shared really quickly, right? Yes. Um, and it's why I, I'm, kind of a, 
a techie nerd. Like I like tech and I've always like been trying to like incorporate it into my life Yes, because yes, I mean, there can be bad aspects of tech. Like you mentioned, you know, Oh, somebody could hack and whatever, but just so you guys are advised, people are trying to hack all the time. And if they really want your information, they're going to find it. I promise they will. Um, you know, we have people all the time, like I laughed, there was this older couple that filled out a mortgage application and they wanted to do it in person and they wanted to give us documents in person. And the reason why is they didn't want it in a cloud system. And I wanted to laugh at them and say, but how do you think your file is going to get underwritten? My underwriter is not physically here local to me. Like they're wherever in the United States, you know, whatever, working remotely, and all the things have to be uploaded. So a lot of people just don't realize that like all the major financial institutions, like everybody like that. And now, I mean, most people know now if you want physical bank statements, you have to pay extra. Yeah. It's not a yes. lot of money necessarily, but it's like one to five dollars a month. Like, why would you do that? I mean, it's so much easier. And not only that, but like if I don't need my actual bank statement, I can just leave it in Chase's system or or Fargo system or wherever. Right. And then when I need it, I can like click the download button and like download my, get it. Yeah. Yeah. Up to somebody. Mortgage, I can click the button. Like there are some huge advantages to keeping yourself completely digital. If you can, there is financially speaking, it's huge. Financially it's so big. And like, I mean, just utilizing all the different tools that you can then use. Like we used, um, mint for a while for like handling our budgeting and our, um, and organizing, like how we're actually spending our money. Cause you know, there's like in, you know, QuickBooks and stuff like that, but those are like for companies, right? You don't want right. that. But mint just went down. They got bought out by credit karma, which I love credit karma. If you haven't gotten that sign up. I love it. If you haven't already, it's such a great, careful. Their, inter- their information is not always accurate. I will tell you. Correct. But they're really no. good at letting you know when your stuff is being accessed. Like yeah. if you're, if there's any breaches, if there's anything like any type of fraud alerts or anything like that, it's on there. It's great. And go, being somebody who's actually had their identity stolen um, during COVID, uh, when everyone was trying to file for, um, uh, what do you call it for? Um, oh my gosh, with the EDD, the employment. The, um, oh, yeah, the employment thing where they had for businesses. Yep. Yes. Uh, not just the PPP. Of, it wasn't the PPP. It was unemployment for unemployment, for unemployment, for, for payment, for unemployment. And someone filed as me to get unemployment, to collect unemployment. <laughs> and it happened to my best friend too. She also had somebody who said they were her to file for unemployment. She's like, what are you talking about? I've never had yeah. unemployment. Yeah. I didn't file. I was like, wait, what? And and to this day, they can't verify because the person actually was able to cha- change the address on file. So I can't even verify myself yet. I have to like, I don't know. I need to call back and figure it out. So it's still ongoing, but I called the police because that's what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to notify authorities. So I called the police and filed a report. And the cop said, he was like, you know, cause then I told them what I do. I said, you know, I can't, I can't believe it finally caught up to me. I've talked about it for all these years about like, it can happen. And he goes, but you're not wrong. It's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when he's well, like, so why, like, there's another guy that I talked to. We did a podcast with him where he represents legal shield and ID shield. And they mm-hmm. are like a paid service, but they do a very good job of protecting your identity and things like that or whatever. The thing I don't like about Credit Karma is they sell your information and they're also not accurate. Like I've watched them when clients have horrible credit scores, tell them, oh, you can apply for this credit card. And I'm like, don't tell them to apply. Oh yeah, no, that's how they make money. No, I yeah, know, no, they it's make... gonna hard pull yeah. credit and it's gonna jack with that. Like, why would you even give them that false hope? So a lot of times people don't realize that Services like that are good to a point, but you have to take all that with a grain of salt. Yeah. Because like I even have a trying to make like LifeLock like is paid and I have major problems with life. Like I've had clients have huge issues with LifeLock and it's paid and they don't. Yeah. Huge issues. Yeah. Big fights, like big, like where it was like, I thought I paid for this service and you're not providing this service now. Like as soon as this actually happened, my dining was stolen. You're out when they said they were going to be there. Oh yeah. Big issues, big issues, like real time. Yeah. So there's, there's, it's all, you always got to be careful. But my point is, is that you, you know, with paper, you're also risking a lot too. Oh yeah. You're risking that 
it may be gone. Like a promissory you note, know, you better hope. Like that's all you like. A, you know, that's the most. That's the one thing you need in your estate plan. Those are the things that you need that have to be actual, real, tangible, and have a real wet signature on it. Everything else, you don't need the actual original. But if you don't like if those get lost, if you get if those get misplaced or somebody takes them or whatever, like they just get all over. Like there's just there's a lot of risk there, too, of losing that information. So life, life honestly is risk all, all over the place like, it I is. This all the time. Part of the reason that I created this podcast was that people could be more informed and that they could make whatever decision fits them and their life. Right. So you are going to take a risk no matter what. You get in the car, you take the risk of putting yourself in harm's way. You walk outside your house, you put at your risk. You you stay inside your house. I mean, think about an asteroid could fall out of the sky and like disseminate, you know, whatever, tornado, like literally, like life. Everything's a risk. risk. Yes. So you just have to decide what's your risk. Like which one is the one you want to accept and go with. And that is my point. That is exactly my point. Like just, you know, so I always just encourage people to really think about that because I think there's a lot of benefits. Um, the pros and cons can be a uh, really important to weigh when making decisions like that. But yeah, either way, have your finances organized because stuff like this, all the things that can happen, all the stuff that you want to be able to do to succeed as well for your, like you said, Jax, like for it to reach your goals, to actually have peace of mind and knowing where things are. Oh my gosh, it's just, mm. and going back to your point, circling back with, you're going to have to spend, we say there's the three most precious, precious resources are your time, your energy, and your money, right? Those are our most precious resources. Absolutely. The only, and the only one that you can't refill is time. So you ha- if you want to be organized, if you want to do all these things and you want to have all this stuff together, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to use one of those resources, at least one of them. You're either going to have to do it yourself, use your energy and your time. So those are two. You're going to have, you could hire it out and use your money and maybe a little bit of your time or what, you know, it's a combination. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, everything in life, it's just, it's, it's just decisions. Like I, I would t- I tell my girls all the time, do and get wherever you want to get, but do it intentionally, right? Like whatever yes. you want to do, do it with your whole heart, do it in a way that represents you and to be real, I don't care what your mother said, what your best friend said, what the random stranger on the street told you. My mom has a saying, and it's true. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. Okay? Yes. So everyone's going to have an opinion <laughs> about your life and what you're doing, what you're doing well, what you're doing poorly. It doesn't matter. It yep. is irrelevant. It's where are you going? What are your goals? What have you laid out? How do you want it to look? Right. And there's an organization just in that of itself. And if you haven't ever taken the time to sit down and actually physically write out your goals and this, you should do on paper, write them out, speak them into existence of what exactly it is that you want to do. Right. Because this happened, like just kind of going amok, like it doesn't get you where you want to be. Right. I mean, I am a firm believer that we all, each and every one of us, I don't care what kind of level of education you have. I don't care how smart or stupid you think you are. I don't care any of those factors. It's irrelevant. You have power beyond your wildest dreams locked inside of you if you will just let it out. But you're never going to let it out if you don't have any sort of a plan. If there's no organizational system, if there's no thought for how you want to get there and you're just kind of rolling through life, you're not going to get to where you want to be. And it doesn't matter how weird or stupid your goals might seem to somebody else. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The only person that's going to affect is you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, so yeah, so just don't worry about everyone else's opinions about it. And I know that's very hard because we are literally bombarded with opinions 24 seven, right? Because you can't not pick up your phone and look at any Facebook group where somebody posted something and 8 million people have piled in on their opinion about it. Yes. Women, especially moms groups love to like hop in and like share their thing. And I'm always raising my hand, like, Hey, I think you actually know what you want. Like, listen to yourself, right? Like hear what, what is it that that's resonating with you? You probably already know the answer. Yeah, you do for validation here, but you, you do know the answer. Like, you know, in your heart of hearts, like what, you know, your gut makes sense for you. Right. Yep. 
And, and also it's like the, what, and we always say we have our, we have a process that we use in all of our, with organizing anything, with organizing anything digitally, we call it the simple, our simplify method and S stands for simplify or specify your goals. And so being really specific with what and why, because the why really helps gear you, like set you up for success because now you have a reason to do it. Yeah. So you have the what you're trying to do. And then you have the why behind it, which really motivate. that's the motivating piece, right? That's, and, and then you look at anything. So like in our instance, and with, it, it's the same when looking at your finances in general and figuring out, like, if your goal is to retire, and this is why you want to retire, because you don't want to work for, you can't work forever. Like that is a real, that's a, that's a reason for everybody, right? Absolutely. And so you look at things like, okay, how can I make that happen? Cause that's the goal. The end result is that. So what do I need to shift? And, and that's the lens you look through everything with is okay. And that really guides you. You work backwards from there, like you said, and that's the same with organizing. It's the same. So like when you're organizing your finances, when you're organizing your um, files, your emails, whatever you have and how you're spending in your time too. Yep. organizing your time, you know, time management. Oh my gosh. So like what's on your calendar, oh, your to do's, all that. <laughs> yeah. I'm bad about time management because <laughs> I'm ADHD and so my brain's like. Shoo, 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 shoo. <laughs> it, it's, you know, there's a lot of people out there like that. And so coming up with something, you know, just having that what and why will help at least get you started and guide you along your way. So I also think that a lot of people don't spur to action because it's uncomfortable because they want to stay in the place of comfortability. Like, but you know, nothing's gone bad yet, but nothing has this yet or whatever. But here's the problem. You either are going to be spurred into action by your own action. So you're going to say, you know what, this is where I want to go. This is where I want to get, I'm going to do it. Or life is going to happen and it's going to force you into force it. You. Which way would you prefer it to be? Would you like it to be your choice and on your terms? Or would you like life to come up and kick you in the ass and say, hey, you're going to have to move because literally one, one or the other is going to happen to you, whether Absolutely. you like it or not. And you can avoid it maybe for a while. That's true. Maybe you can, you know, sidestep and, you know, kind of maneuver. But the truth of the matter is, is if you don't find some sort of organizational system, be it, you know, utilizing somebody like Alex or figuring out on your own path, it will come for you. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it's like death and taxes like that too. Like needing and shifting and changing is a part of life. You will continue to do it. And yes, it is uncomfortable. And yes, it doesn't feel good on the face. But once you start seeing you know, yourself reaching the goals and getting to the milestones and doing the things, I promise there is something so fulfilling about that. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and if it doesn't ever hit you too, it'll hit your, the people that you love the most. Exactly. Yeah. And would you like, would so, you like that? Would you like that you left them with a hot mess? Right. Right. I mean, while they're in the process of grieving you, because the truth of the matter is, Sometimes we get a heads up, you know, where somebody deals with a long battle of cancer right. or some kind of right. uh, long disease where you do know and you have time to prepare for end of life. And then sometimes, I mean, I have a very dear friend and oh my gosh, her family has been through so much. So her, she lost her brother at some point, her sister's uh, son, so her nephew dealt with brain cancer. He fought oh, it and won. Okay. So That's good. Great, yeah. Her sister and that same nephew died in a car wreck together. Like, you think any of that was expected? Like, think about right. that for a minute, right? Like, you know, after all of that craziness happening in their family, that's the last thing I guarantee you that they thought was going to happen. It was the last way they felt like these people were going to go. Yep. Like, and I mean, I'm not trying to be morbid by any stretch or whatever, right? No, like, but it's the like, reality. It, it is. And I want you, like I, like I said, my passion is for people and I want you to get wherever you want to be intentionally. That's really my goal. My yep. intention for the podcast, for picking guests who have that similar alignment with me, who feel that same way. They just want people to get wherever that is in their life. Absolutely. And, and this supports that. So this helps think of organizing as a support system to help you get there. Yeah, absolutely. 
So as we're wrapping up, is there any last words? I think maybe there's an offer you have for our listeners. Like, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So we have a couple, so we have a free consultation first and foremost, if you're interested in learning more about our services, uh, feel free to visit, visit our website, beorganizing.com. But also um, we do offer a free consultation where we actually meet with you over Zoom and learn about what you're looking for specifically, what your needs are, what your wants are, your dreams um, and see if we're the right fit for you. And if we can work together, we go over our different options and guide you along the way on what we believe could be the best fit for you. Cause not everybody, the it's not a one size fits all. So sure. we have, yeah. And um, so that is free is 45 minutes. And then we also have uh, different tools online. Um, feel free to check them out. We have the digital declutter calendar. It's a checklist of things to keep up with your digital organizing in your different spaces. So you don't forget, like, for example, going through that downloads folder, that's probably just racked up with files and sitting there um, with information that probably needs to be filed away, um, to be quite honest, because a lot of people just leave it there and do a quick search, but then they're just can never really rely, it could just disappear at any moment. So um, going through that, and so that's that checklist. And we also have our 30 day digital detox, which is a challenge for, it's a once a day email that gets sent out and gives you something to tangible to do that day um, to get your life organized in different areas. Nice. Awesome. So yeah, there's a lot of different options there guys on, you know, depending on what you're, what you're wanting to look to do. And we thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you so much for Alex for being our guest today on financial mastery simplified. Hopefully these are tools that you can use to simplify your life and be the best you can be and financially master your life. So thank you so much. And we'll see you again next time. Bye. Thanks Jax.